How are you? How are you doing? I am sensational. I'm so happy to be here. Oh, happy to have you yeah, here. Yeah, this is my first time on your show. Yeah, first time we've met, just a yeah, moment ago. Yeah, just backstage. You, do you live out here or do you live in Los Angeles? I live in L.A. Okay, yeah. welcome back to the East Thank Coast. Thank you. I come here all the time. Oh, yeah, me too. Yeah, you know, yeah. just... Yeah, yeah. yeah just I to, like it. Like to look. Yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> No, uh, you're, uh, you're, you're funny, you're talented, uh, you're successful, uh, you're uh, attractive. Did my uh, mom call you before the show? She did. She did. She got to me. Give you some affirmations for Aisha. You claim, <laughs> but you claim that you were a weird kid. I was the weirdest kid. No, what, in what way were you? I have a picture of you here. Are you? Okay. I don't know where we got this. Are you? You know? I'm fine. Oh, I know that photo. Absolutely. Okay. That's a very proud day for me, you guys. This uh, is what's. There I am. What's going on? Winning best effort at the science fair. There you go. Best effort. Best effort. <laughs> no, I, I, I believe. <laughs> I believe that they do give out a Nobel Prize in Best Effort. In efforts. Best Effort. It's good for you for doing. What was the project? Uh, I did, I, I was, you know, I was one of those kids. I was a very nerdy kid. I mean, look at, look at, look at the Casio watch. Look at oh, the, yeah, look, at, look at the future telling glasses. Look into my eyes. Wow. Um, I have one of those, those, like, those crazy belts that were, like, made out of, like, jumpsuit vinyl. Like, I could, you know, make a parachute out of it. I was the weirdest kid. Sure. And I, my, I was growing plants with uh, ultraviolet. Violet bulbs because I was a lazy bastard. That's like the easiest science thing. I don't know. Will a plant grow better in sunlight or in fake light? Let's see what happens. Look it up. Wow. You don't need to do an experiment wow. to answer that <laughs> yeah. question. Yeah, unless you're growing weed. Yeah, exactly. exactly. In which case, you know. Yeah, that helps. Um, but I was, I was just a really nerdy. I was a really nerdy kid. What was your weird? weird what was your weirdest uh, expression of it? Is I don't know if this is weird, but I heard that you, you grew up on an ashram. Yes. I mean, not my entire childhood, but my parents moved to California in the 60s. You know, they meditated and they were vegetarians. And I've been this tall, you guys, since like preschool. I'm not joking. I was, a, I was just blackzilla, just trampling tiny Caucasian kids, mm -hmm. smearing them to a paste on the, on the playground. Uh -huh. And then uh, when I was maybe eight or nine, I lived in an ashram for a while, but it was an urban ashram. It was in Oakland, California. Like namaste? So, like namaste, like meditate, the bindi, the whole nine. Wow. And, um, um, and it was kind of cool because it was like a closed system. So if you were a kid, you could kind of jam around on your own, unsupervised. Was it was it a was it a compound? Was it a building? Was it was a, a it was both. It was a building that, uh, and a compound. Look at that, two things. It was a bound. Pa I don't. That's not a word. Um, <laughs> it was like a big building. Uh, it's still there. It's been there for like forty years. What's it called? It's I can't remember because I blacked that whole part of my life out. Okay. Just, yeah. I've been no working on it. I've been working on it in therapy. <laughs> um, uh, and also, it, like there were fun parts, like the kind of the independence, but you had to do chores, and the food was such a bummer, man. Just a lot of chickpeas. A lot of chickpeas. A lot of ground up. I think. I think they just put in whatever stuff they found, like left out on the doorstep. Mm. Uh, there was this but all vegetarian, right? Vegetarian, and there was this breakfast item called sour cereal, which, by the way, if you're a kid, has got to be the worst possible thing to put in your mouth. Sour. All the other kids get like marshmallows and charms and Frosted something. Frosted honey skulls. Yeah, yes, yeah. exactly. Something that turns your chocolate like black. It like the, the the milk is so chocolatey, it's black. It's like a sludge. And I got sour cereal. What was sour cereal? It was um, some kind of ground up grain. Uh, some coconut, some spices, and my own salty tears, my friend. <laughs> was this... Was this a cult? Did it you wasn't a cult. cult. They're, still, they're still there. Doesn't mean uh, they're not a cult. Nobody... Cults, can, cults can last a long time. I'm a Catholic. Uh, <laughs> that cult has staying power. Yeah. It really stuck it really in there. Does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Legs. Not like, a cult, though. That cult's got, got, got legs. Okay. Um, no, I mean, just, you know, like hippies meditating and stuff. Okay, that's cool. You know, you know how hippies do. Well, um, so you said you, you grew up with your dad, right? My parents separated when I was ten, and then okay, my dad, the dad me. Was he strict dad, fun dad? What kind of dad? My dad was a was a funly strict dad. Funly strict. Funly strict. So my dad, um, I love him. He's still around. Hi, dad. Uh, and he had a lot of sayings. Um, okay. Uh, and so he would give me these little kind of like aphorisms, these little like mottos. And one of them was when I would leave the house, he would go, "Keep your grades and your drawers up." Uh, that was a favorite. Yeah. I, he said that to me until I was like 35. Uh, <laughs> and another one, this was when I was pretty young, is we had this little back and forth, and yeah. uh, I'd leave, and he'd go, he'd stop me on the stairs and go, whose day is it? I'd say, it's my day. And then he'd go, what are you going to do to it? And I'd, I'd grab it by the <laughs> and, then, and then he'd go, and then he'd go. And, drawers up yeah, and grab and it grab by, by the <laughs> Yeah. Which also would be good in like certain dating situations. Sure, uh, yeah. And then we'd say, and then what are you going to do? And I'd have to say, and twist, and twist. So. <laughs>
seriously. Yes. Wow. Yeah, and, you wow. know, it was very, it was yeah. very effective. It was effective sure. messaging. That's very sweet. Effective That's dad very messaging. Sweet. Yeah. 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 He wow. was, you know, he just, my dad, you know, I wrote about this in my book, but like a father of a, a single father of a daughter, like the whole world is just like broken glass and open lava pits and your daughter's like this little kitten and you're like, how am I gonna make this tiny kitten like right. strong enough to weather all of these terrible dangers? And so he would just scream at me about testicles to make me tough. Wow. <laughs> And keep you in the ashram. Keep, on, keep, me in, the keep me in the ashram. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, you now. Well, now you've you've got a successful career, and now you're directing. Yeah. You have a, a new movie called Axis. Axis what what, yeah. what is this movie about? Uh, Axis is a thriller. It's a really unique movie. Uh, it's about an expatriate Irish actor who lives in L.A. Uh, had a lot of success early on in his career, and you know, made a lot of money. He was a single guy with deep pockets, and he partied a lot, mm -hmm. and he kind of made a mess of his life. And in the movie, he's really trying to put his life back together. He's trying to be a better version of himself. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we can all relate to it. You're not, a, you're not a bad person, but you've done a few bad things. You're trying to be a better version of yourself. Right. But on this one day, the whole movie takes place in a car in real time driving through Los Angeles. Okay. Uh, in real time, as he's driving to meet uh, the person that he loves, his whole life starts to kind of crumble down around him. Oh. And so it's really about a guy trying to hold his life together, hold his relationships together, um, and stay sober, uh, which sounds like it'd be a while bummer. While he's driving. While he's driving, while he's driving, which is hard to do. Um, and it sounds about, like a bummer, but it's really captivating, and it's funny, it's very darkly funny. Mm -hmm. um, and the lead actor, Emmett Hughes, um, he wrote the film, and he's, this, it's, we're introducing him, he's a newcomer, and he's a really sensational actor. He, Are you in it? I'm in it. Uh, he carries the whole film. He's on screen the entire time. Time. But I'm in it. Um, Sam Rockwell is in it. He wasn't an Oscar winner before the movie, but he's an Oscar winner now. So you're welcome, Sam. Um, wow. And uh, that's nice. yeah, he actually he actually phoned in his role. He did it on the phone while he was shooting the three billboards uh, outside Ebbing, Missouri. He actually stopped on his lunch break to do his role for this movie. So he was very generous. Oh, that's uh, cool. And the people love Criminal Minds. There are a bunch of people from the cast of Criminal Minds in it: uh, Thomas Gibson, <laughs> Kirsten Vanksness, Patrick Brewster, and uh, and then Lucky Yates and Amber Nash from Archer. And I essentially just went to all my friends and begged them to. Work for free. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I've done that. Yeah, yeah, I've exactly. Oh, they're really nice about it to a point, anyway. Well, it's lovely yeah. to meet you. Thank you so Such much for a being pleasure. here. Thanks for having me. Axis is now available on demand. Aisha Tyler, everybody. We'll be right back.